Good morning, guys. It's currently 7 a.m. Monday morning. Managed to make it out to my snapper spot, and uh, what an absolute mission that was. The swell is pretty big, it's about two and a half meters. There's a westerly wind blowing, it's supposed to be under 10 knots, but I reckon it sits about 12, gusting or 15. And the ocean is really confused. There's a lot of waves coming different directions from the last you know, storm sort of cell we had on the weekend, which has kept it pretty mushy out here. Had a few sort of touch and go uh, moments trying to get through the reef to get out here. The swell being so big and then the ocean being so confused, it made it a real washing machine to try and make it through that gap. And uh, there was a couple of real hairy moments there where I thought, this is this is borderline getting too dangerous. I had to keep the, the nose into it and just sort of keep the power on and just power up the big swells before they sort of broke and sort of crashed. And uh, yeah, it was a bit hairy coming out during the sort of darker period. It was just enough light that I could just make out the swell and see what they were doing to some description. But yeah, it's probably, for a boat this size, it's probably borderline getting dangerous, especially if you're not 100% familiar with your area and, and your boat. And uh, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't come out here again with these conditions just because of how dangerous it you know, potentially could have turned out to be. I got pretty lucky. And the reason I kept going is I'm trying to turn around in that swell, mushy sort of washing machine um, area. It would have been more deadly to try and turn around in that, potentially cop a wave over the side, or, you know, um, approach the boat, etc. So I powered through it, got out into the sort of deeper water where it's a little bit safer, regrouped, had a good assess of the conditions out here. It's, it's still lumpy and it's not going to be comfortable to fish in, but it's not dangerous out here yet, unless that wind picks up, and that could be. But the reason I kept powering through as well is trying to get back through that while it was still so dark would have just been dangerous. Coming out here in a bit of safer water, I'll let the sun rise, I'll have a fish for a bit, hopefully get some fish, make it worthwhile, and then I'll be able to power back in and sit on the back of the swell wave and just ride it in. Good enough to get in the bite, maybe. Or it could be on the bottom. So, fingers crossed we can get some fish and make it worthwhile, but and the GoPro isn't going to demonstrate how rough it is. Yeah, I've got a fish on it, I think. Alright, well, let's get into it. Look at the size of that swell. That is a big boy. Another massive one coming in. is actually that way. I'm seeing those big swells, I just turn back into them rather than letting them pick me up and throw me around. Now the plan is to fucking send it. So I know my passage, I know where I've got to be. It's just making sure that none of these bastards catch me and throw me around. And that's when it's gonna get bad. The idea is there's about a 12 second gap between the big swell waves. Maybe 14 seconds at most. I'm gonna need, all right, so it's clear. The big swells have pushed back. This is the last one.
dangerous. That's real dangerous. Just cut water over the back of the boat. We're gonna get this in, we're gonna get it in quick. We're in a dangerous zone. That is why I need to install a holder for this thing, because that could have really ended badly if that had happened in any closer. Luckily, it doesn't sink past. Holy shit. Let's go. We've got a big swell forming at the back. We're not gonna have much time. window at that time to get through with those swells but that anchor setting me back it really put me back those sort of 20 seconds that I needed for that clear passage and that could have ended quite badly especially if that anchor had grabbed if that anchor had hit the bottom it's only shallow like six meters it wouldn't have taken much but it hit the bottom and grabbed and I was anchored in there Man, that could have been so dangerous. So freaking dangerous. So that anchor is gonna get a new home from now on. And uh, I've definitely, definitely pushed myself and my little tinny probably pretty fucking close to its limits, to be honest. I uh, won't be doing that again in any hurry. That is for sure. That is for sure that that was pretty freaking scary I mean the GoPro may not show just how rough it was but it's not fun out there I tell you it is not fun heading out into it it's never never quite as bad because you're punching those on and you, your boat will sort of chip through it a bit easier but coming back it's easy for a swell to pick you up throw you sideways and roll you especially if you're get caught surfing the wave and it broaches and there's so many so many things that can go wrong in a situation like that you really really got to be confident in yourself and in your boat and know your passages that you're passing through because that that's probably a bit silly of me to go out this morning but as I said I was punching into it and trying to turn around in that to go home in the dark that wouldn't have been a sensible idea. At least with sunlight, once I was out into the deeper water, it was a bit safer, I could regroup 
and then coming back through, I can see what was going on, where the reef, where the water was breaking. Avoid that sort of area. But yeah. Oh. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've seen just how quick shit can go wrong in a boat, and uh, why it's it's worth the, worth not pushing yourself or your boat past those limits because. I was pretty lucky, that could have gone way worse, way worse.